Ladies and gentlemen, this is a fight that we've been talking about. Reports are saying that they're in negotiations. Golden Board promotions, matchroom boxing. Turkey Alashikir, my friend. You know Turkey Alashikir. Sometimes I'm like, what is this man about? Is it good to good to be true? This man in the sport of boxing, he is <laughs> spending their money, giving us what we want to see. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, shout out to Tony Alashiki, shout out to Eddie Hearn, shout out to Oscar De La Hoya, shout out to Eric Gomez, shout out to the world of boxing. This is a fight that we've been talking about for quite some time. And ladies and gentlemen, I've been saying for, for a while, if you've been following the channel, subscribe to the channel, smash the like button like if you were smashing your shorty last night. If you haven't, Listen to what I've been trying to say about Boots and his boots. You got to move up to the 154-pound division. That's where you're going to make your legacy. That's where it's stacked up. Ladies and gentlemen, the 154-pound division is a landmine. Hey, yo, the number one could lose to the number 10 if you don't come prepared. Hey, yo, but Boots and Virgil is a fight that we've been talking about for years, even before the pandemic. Y'all remember, if y'all follow the channel, subscribe to the channel, Punch Run Boxing, a.k.a. Mr. Moo, shot himself, a.k.a. El Adobo, a.k.a. El Sasso, a.k.a. El Borracho, a.k.a. Café Bustelo, a.k.a. The most high octane with the best delivery in the sport of boxing. I've been telling y'all that Boots Ennis is the second coming of Roy Jones Jr. Several years ago, and I know some of that, some of y'all look at his past performance versus Karen, and y'all I'm like, nah, man. Nah, I punch. Nah, you premature. I don't give a damn. I got a good, I got a good eye for the sport of boxing. I said that Virgil Ortiz in 154 was gonna do damage. I said that he is going to be probably El Rey. And Ray, that 154-pound division. I believe so. I, th I think that Virgil Ortiz will beat Tim Zhu. I know he, he had his fight with, with, with uh, Boa Chuck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every, every good or potential great fighter need that type of war to prepare for this type of fight. This type of fight. With Boots Ennis and Virgil Ortiz. Um, again... I, I think that the 147-pound division is a, go, is, is a ghost town. I think that Boots Ennis will beat Mario Barrios. I think that Boots Ennis will beat Brian Norman Jr. I think that Boots Ennis will beat everybody in the 147-pound division. And now we're going to the sport. It's unfortunate, but now we're going to the sport uh, uh, and that, that belts really don't matter. It, it, it does. But I'm not going to wait until Boots Ennis get, a, Boots Ennis get a title in 154 and Virgil Ortiz get a title in 154 so I can see that type of matchup. Hey, yo, look what we're going to see on February 1st. What fight that we've been talking about? David Benavides and David Morrell. Probably one of the best fights in the sport of boxing matchup-wise, right? Stylistic-wise. Do they got a strap? No, I don't give a damn. The, last year, the most, lu the most lucrative fight... In the sport of boxing 2023, right, was Javante Tan Davis Ryan versus Ryan Garcia. The most lucrative fight in the sport of boxing outside of, shout out to Jake Paul, Mike Tyson, Amanda Serrano, uh-uh-uh-uh-uh-uh, Katie Taylor. Outside of that, remember last year it was Javante Tan Davis versus Ryan Garcia. What belt did they fight for? No belts, right? The fans primarily wants to see great matchup and great entertainment. Right? We don't want the belts to get in the way. You know what I'm saying? We don't give a damn about the belts federation too much because they've been playing too much. They've been playing around. They've been playing around too much. Right? But <laughs> Turk Alashiki is doing a good thing. You know what I'm saying? I, I, the only thing that I'm very skeptical about is like, you know, we don't know what to really expect. Is he, it, it, he's throwing out money, but is he going to stay here for good? Is he going to be here for years and years and years? Oh, this is just him having fun and using boxing like a, like his little toy and having fun because he got a lot of money to do so. But it seems like he's trying to give the sport what it needs. He needs to give us what we want. And he's giving the, 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 the fighters um, uh, uh, opportunities to make great money and to enhance their legacy. Right? Um, uh, 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 Boots and he's got the IBF title in the 147 pound division. He could use that to position himself to be in position in the 154, right? Um, this is a great fight, you know, uh, with with Boots Ennis and and Virgil Ortiz. Um, I believe that the style of their uh, of how they fight is gonna mesh up very very well. You know what I'm saying? Um, Virgil Ortiz, great great jab. We seen Virgil Ortiz knock out people with a jab, um, selective of punches and stuff like that. We seen the vulnerability a little bit of, of these guys in the defensive end, but their offensive prowess and and their specialty when it comes to the twitch muscle that they have. Um, um, you know, we saw Virgil Ortiz. Yes, he was getting tagged, he was getting dropped. 
but he kept on getting up like a warrior and he fought harder harder every time you and we've seen this a couple of times remember versus me machine he got wobbled boom boom and he came back um um um, um then he came back harder than pause he he came he came back fighting harder than 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 it was before he got stung Right? We saw that with Boy Chuck as well. We seen Jerome Boots Ennis as well go through adversity, try to box you. We know that Boots Ennis, look, look, put it this way, because a lot of people was 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 criticizing Jerome Boots Ennis. Jerome Boots Ennis beat Karen, the Karen that was fighting in the outside and stuff like that, right? Then he beat Karen, the guy that was coming forward, which means I know a lot of people was critiquing, but I got an eye for talent and I see it and, and, and I see it from a different perspective. I saw Jerome Boots Ennis beat Karen and any style that Karen was gonna come was gonna come to the ring with. And that's what he said leading up to the fight. Whatever he wants to do, I'm prepared for it. Now, what the fans was prepared for is for Jerome Boots and it's a knockout Karen. That's why I didn't give him the benefit of the doubt when he actually outboxed him. Not only when Karen was moving around, but when he, but when Karen changed his 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 style and his approach, and he made the type of adjustments, Boots Ennis was prepared for that type of adjustments. Which means that Boots Ennis could beat you in any style. You want to box me? I'm I'm still gonna outpoint you. You want to come forward and stuff like that? I dare you. you gonna get dropped like you did i believe in the in, in the second round second second and third round so jerome boots and it's in my opinion he fought well versus karen the thing is that we was looking for a knockout because we premature not premature but we we we, we so into our own hype when we assess fighters we get mad at them while we giving them the hype you understand what i'm trying to say we get mad at them we the one that look like i said at the beginning i said that boots and it's six years ago when he was here and punch wrong boxing several times used to show me love he boots I asked you for the interview the last time I went to Philadelphia, and Boots was like, nah. Boots was good. I thought you was a humble cat. Don't forget about the people that was first talking about you, because ain't nobody here was talking about you but your boy, Mr. Moonshine. I don't know what was that about. Hmm? Boots! But I ain't gonna take a personal boost, you know what I'm saying? Probably too, probably you, 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 you know what I'm saying? You, you, you had a had a busy you had a bunch of interviews and and yeah, I I looked at it and I said, man, he's tired. He 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 really wants to go. But if it was anything than that, boots, boots, don't forget about the people that was that was that was talking about you when nobody here was talking about you. Don't forget about your number one supporters, Bootsy. But anyway, um, but I think it's a great matchup. Um, they're 27 years old, 27, 28. I think Boots is gonna be 28 years old. Uh, maybe he's this year or next year. They fought in the same class and in the, in, in, in the same class, but not the same division in the amateur. So I think this is look. I always say, twenty-seven years old from twenty to thirty-two years old is where your uh, um, physical ability co and, and your intellect coexist at the highest level. I think they're in their prime. I think they mesh well. The power of Virgil Ortiz, the power of Bruce Ennis, the agile, the 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 um orfo the orthodox southpaw ways of him switching up Bruce Ennis. Virgil Ortiz, you know what I'm saying? He's a, a constant, um, a constant effective pressure fighter. Um, and I think it's going to be a great fight. It's a great thing for the sport of boxing, a great thing for Matchroom to do business with, with, with Oscar De La Hoya. And, you know, and, and look, I'm going to tell you like this. Turkey has done a wonderful job in bringing these entities, these powerful entities that don't, that don't uh, um, align themselves, that don't get along. Like Eddie Hearn don't get along with Oscar De La Hoya, but they're going to do business because of Turkey Alashiki throwing that type of money. Eddie Hearn wasn't 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 cool with um with Frank Warren and you know Turk Alashiki threw that money and now we saw several several days ago that um Lou DeBella and Eddie Hearn collaborating um because they signed George Camboso. So it's, it seems like Eddie Hearn is trying his best to rewrite the wrong in terms of collaborating with people. Um he did bring the zone to the forefront, and I know and and, and we gotta thank Eddie Hearn for that, right? Um so shout out to Eddie Hearn for that. Shout out to Oscar De La Hoya to also get 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 on get on that wagon of Turkey Alashiki to make these type of fights. They had the Latino that the Latino night. Um, we have seen Barbosa beats Ramirez in a, in a hundred and forty pound division. I think Honor Barbosa has earned a shot now through the WBO champion, right? Which is Tiafimo Lopez or Jack Catterall. So gotta give a lot, gotta give a shout out to to Honor Barbosa for finally. Beating somebody and, and making a type of statement. It wasn't a statement, but a but a statement win to now for people to call out for him to really get that opportunity. He's been in that position for quite some time. Right is right, wrong is wrong. Um, but this fight right here, man, I, I think is one of the most interesting matchups in the sport of boxing. And and that's where boxing is heading in right now. You know what I'm saying? Like, 
Um, I'm 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 all for the belts. I want legacy reign supreme. But if we could get this, but the, the if we if, if this is more of a, of a significant fight, you know what I'm saying? Like if you think about it, what you what you will see a Fundura who is a champion versus Earl Spence, which is a good fight, or Bruce Ennis versus Virgil Ortiz, and you got to pick one one to watch. I, to be honest, I'm 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 picking Virgil Ortiz versus Bruce Ennis, and you know what I'm saying? I over the championship fight. And that's what we are in the sport of boxing. You know what I'm saying? It's all about matchups to captivate the imagination, the emotions of the boxing fan. And to be honest, it's, this is the perfect time. Let me know what y'all think about this fight. Let me know your prediction. It's a 50 50 fight. Sometimes I used to say boots. Sometimes I'd be like, but damn, Virgil. I mean, of course, the, the last performance got people questioning how special they are. But the vulnerable fighters is always the most exciting fighter because you never know what to expect. You already know this is Punch on Boxing, a.k.a. Mr. Moonshine. It was great news. I love it. Boxing is keep on rising. I hope that 2025 is going to be an epic a epic year like 2023. 2024 has been all right. We did get the undisputed bout between Usyk and Tyson Fury. We get we got that, right? You know, Uwe did his thing. I think there was too many showcase fights, in my opinion. I think they need to step up because, hey, boxing needs it. Let me know what y'all think, man. Subscribe to the channel. Smash the like button. Oh, I'm Anna Serrano Katie Taylor. That was the highlight of my uh, of 2025, 2024. And hopefully we get the trilogy 2025. Let me know what y'all think, man. Subscribe to the channel. Smash the like button. Love you. God bless. And on to the mother effing next. <laughs>